everyone, welcome to the course on medical biomaterials. We will continue on the topic of hydrogels. I just introduced that topic yesterday in the previous class. Hydrogels are as the name implies jelly type of uh, polymeric uh, material. It could be a natural or it could be synthetic and it takes lot of water in it. That is why they are called hydrogels. For example, if you look at this uh, picture, uh, the one here uh, is a dry material, dry polymeric material, but when it takes up water as you can see in this other picture, um, it swells a lot and that is why they get the name of hydrogels. Okay. So, it is a 3D network of polymeric chains that are cross linked by chemical or physical bonding. Okay. There are bonds of chemical nature or physical could be like non bonded interactions and so on actually and uh, they absorb retain large amount of water and there are a lot of hydrophilic groups there are even uh, groups uh, which has uh, negatively charged okay so they can take up uh, cations and so on actually so the classification of hydrogels uh, we have um, permanent chemical bonded or reversible physical bonded that means when there is a physical bonding it's reversible uh, that means the material can be a hydrogel by adding water or it can um, it can uh, give up all the water or it could be a permanent uh, the chemical bonding. So, chemical bonding could be covalent cross linking, equilibrium swelling depends on the polymer water interaction and cross link density. Whereas, physical the networks are made up of um, molecular entanglement or secondary forces like uh, uh, ionic forces, hydrogen bond forces, hydrophobic interactions and so on and the dissolution is prevented because of this and these are all very reversible. So, when I change uh, the physical conditions or stress they may come back uh, to the uh, dry state. So, there are three types of water in hydrogel one is called the free water that is the water which is exactly like the water that is present in the bulk okay. that is like a pure water. So, it, it will get uh, frozen when it, the temperature is lowered maybe at around 0 degree centigrade okay it exactly behaves like the uh, the water present in the bulk then we have freezing bound water that is the water which is weakly bound to the polymer chain and this also undergoes thermal phase changes that means this also can get frozen and this also can become liquid but generally it is um, below 0 degree centigrade. Then we have the bound water non freezing type that means the water is strongly tightly bound to the polymer. So, it will not freeze and uh, become liquid like uh, these freezing bound water or free water. Okay. So, the phase changes may happen much much lower you will not see a phase change also for all you know. Okay. So, three types of water present in hydrogel. Okay. So, materials which absorb water does not mean it is an hydrogel, but uh, materials which absorb water where the water is in these three different forms we can call this as uh, hydrogel. Okay. Now, uh, how do you prepare this hydrogel? We can do it by physical cross linking or through chemical process like I said you know physical. So, easy to produce no need to use cross linking agents like glutaraldehyde or some other um, small molecules. Okay. Uh, so, one approach heating cooling a polymer solution. So, when I cool hot solutions of gelatin or carrageenan it forms a gel due to the helix formation that means as the temperature is lowered these uh, material forms uh, um, helical structure even uh, linear glucons okay. when the temperature is lowered they form helical structures. Uh, now, these helices have junctions and crevices where the water can be trapped. So, carrageenan above this melting transition temperature they are random coils, but when you keep reducing the temperature they form this helical structure. So, these are rigid helical rods, so they form hydrogels. So, when you have salts present uh, of course, they can aggregate um, and they form very stable gels because the salts will have both cations and anions. Okay, so, they form very strong bonding. Uh, ionic interactions. So, ionic polymers cross linked by the addition of di or trivalent counter ions. So, I could add uh, um, calcium 2 plus for example. So, if you take sodium alginate like the name implies sodium and alginate. Okay. So, we can add calcium to that then um, when we add this type of multivalent um, cations 
okay, it forms a gel because uh, calcium has two charges, right, two plus charge. So, it, it can connect to two different alginate chains. Another one is complex co-acervation, okay. That is co-acervation means we have both uh, uh, the anion and cation or uh, two groups of molecules of different charges uh, coming together. So, mixing of polyanion and polycation. Polymers with opposite charges stick together and form soluble and insoluble complexes depending upon the concentration and the pH. Okay, like polyanionic xanthan, polycationic chitosan. Okay, so they have this uh, complex co-acervation because of the um, positive and the negative charge. Okay, proteins below its isoelectric point. So we have positively charged and associated with anion anionic hydrocolloids and form poly ion complex hydrogels. Okay, so um, so you are creating this positive charge on proteins below their isoelectric point. So I can add anionic hydrocolloids so that they form complex uh, hydrogel. Okay, these are all ionic type of hydrogen bonding obtained by lowering the pH of aqueous solution of polymers with carboxyl groups. Hydrogen bond carboxymethyl cellulose formed by dispersing CMC and HCl. Okay, so we have both. Uh, replacing sodium in CMC with hydrogen in acid. Okay, so when I add uh, uh, sodium gets replaced by H, so it can form hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds decrease the solubility of uh, CMC in water, so they form elastic hydrogels. Other examples: we have a polyacrylic acid and polyethylene oxide-based hydrogel prepared by lowering the pH. Xanthan alginate hydrogel, the change in matrix structure due to intermolecular hydrogen bonding between them. So, all these are examples where there is hydrogen bond plays a very, very important role in creating this uh, particular hydrogel system. Okay. Then maturation or heat induced aggregation. Okay. So, aggregation of uh, proteinaceous components induced by heat treatment. So, when we have heat treatment, it increases the molecular weight, so that produces hydrogel. So, gum arabic containing 2 to 3 percent protein. So, maturation of the gum transfer of protein associated with the lower molecular weight components to give large concentrations of high molecular weight. So, these are all heat induced. Freeze thawing. So, when we freeze and thaw, formation of microcrystals in the structure due to the freeze thaw leads to physical cross linking. So, freeze, freeze thaw gels of polyvinyl alcohol and xanthan. Okay. So, when I reduce the temperature, it forms microcrystals okay, and that leads to physical cross linking. Okay. All these are physical based method. Now, we come to uh, chemical based. So, physical based method like I said, uh, we have uh, um, heating cooling a polymer solution. Okay. Then we have the ionic interaction uh, adding a di or trivalent ions, complex co acervation, formation of hydrogen bonds. Then, um, okay, maturation, heat induced aggregation, and then freeze thawing. These are all physical methods. Now let's go look at chemical cross-linking. Okay, so th there we are create, we are having a reaction. So there is a bond formation. Okay, so that's a chemical cross-linking. So reaction of the polymer functional groups like OH, COH, NH2 with cross-linkers like glutaraldehyde, adipic acid, dihydroside, like that. You know. So, we add all these, um, so they react with the functional groups in polymer because many polymer contains, say like PVA contains OH, if you are looking at acrylic acid contains COOH and then if you look at sugar, some sugars they have NH, amine, amide, so on. So, they all cross linked using glutaraldehyde, glutaraldehyde is very commonly used. Interpenetrating polymer network, polymer is a monomer within a mon another monomer. Okay. So, we have a monomer we have another monomer, then we sort of interpenetrating polymer network. So, that is a chemical cross linking. Hydrophobic interaction incorporating a polar hydrophilic group by hydrolysis or oxidation followed by a covalent cross linking. Okay. So, I will incorporate a polar hydrophilic group and then we oxidize and then we do a covalent cross linking. Okay. That is another type of uh, approach. Okay. So, we create in a polymer hydrophilic group by having a polar hydrophilic group, then we hydrolyze or oxidize and then we cross link the system. Um, so, chemical cross linkers further, uh, what do we use? We use glutaraldehyde, 
epichlorohydrin, these are all very commonly used, citric acid, introduction of new molecules between the polymeric chains to produce the crosslinking. So, if we have two chains, in between these two chains we are putting in epichlorohydrin or glutaraldehyde. Okay? Uh, for example, cross-linking of PVA hydrogel using glutaroidehyde, cross-linking of CMC using 1,3-diaminopropane. So, all these are um, small molecules which are in between two chains. Okay? Then comes grafting, that is polymerization of a monomer on the backbone of a preformed polymer. So, we have a polymer, then we put in uh, uh, another monomer and start polymerizing. Polymer chains activated by the action of chemical reagents or high energy radiation. So, we activate them by putting in some re radiation or we add some highly reactive functional groups. Growth of functional monomers on activated macro radicals leads to branching and further cross linking. Okay? So, um, we already have a chain, long chain, we create radicals and then we create the branching and then cross linking. That is called grafting method. This grafting has a chemical grafting radiation grafting. So, in chemical grafting what do we do? We have a mac macromolecular backbone, okay? this is activated by the action of chemical reagent. So, we have starch grafted with acrylic acid by using n vinyl 2 peridone. Okay? So, we have starch okay, uh, backbone, then we put in acrylic acid using uh, this particular chemical. So, it shows excellent pH dependent swelling behavior ideal characteristic for drug delivery in the intestine, otherwise pure starch is not very, very suitable. Other one is radiation grafting, that means we initiate the grafting using high energy radiation like gamma or electron. So, when these bombard uh, the uh, backbone, they create radicals which are ready for uh, chemical modification. Grafting CMC with acrylic acid in the presence of electron beam. So, the electron beam what does it do? It initiates free radical polymerization of this acrylic acid and CMC. So, that is called radiation grafting. So, we have chemical grafting that means chemicals modify the backbone and then it uh, add other functional groups or radiation uh, creates uh, functional groups or radicals. So, we can add another uh, um, monomer and then polymerize it further. So, we have radiation cross linking that is the third approach. Okay. So, here exposure of the polymer to high energy source such as gamma ray, x ray, electron beam okay. and then uh, this leads to direct or indirect depends on the polymer environment, solution, concentration, solid state and so on. Okay. So, what do we do? Another approach uh, we do the radiation but uh, we immerse the polymer in aqueous, so the radiation mainly absorbed by water. Water radiolysis generates react reactive free radicals which interacts with the polymer. So, you are actually um, radiating the water which generates free radicals which in turn generates free radicals on the polymer. Radiation concentrated solution, these are different approaches of this radiation both direct and indirect. Concentration of uh, polymer high radiation directly acts on the polymer to form free radicals water is also radialized to form free radicals. Okay. These are indirect method, this is indirect method, this is direct method. Okay. These are all based on radiation cross linking. Okay. So, what are the advantages? It retains biocompatibility of the polymer as it does not involve the use of chemical additives. So, if you are using a chemical cross linker, the polymer is getting modified. Sometimes their functional groups get modified, the reactivity may modify, hydrophilicity may modify, the surface energy may get modified. Okay. And the advantage of radiation is we achieve modification as well as sterilization. So, it is very good, cost effective. Disadvantages cannot be applied on polysaccharides and other natural polymers because uh, polysaccharides or other uh, biopolymers will completely get disintegrated. So, it leads to degradation. So, that is the big uh, problem about using uh, uh, something like uh, radiation grafting. Okay. So, we have uh, chemical. Uh, we have uh, different approaches, right? We talked about chemicals, we talked about uh, radiation, and so on. Actually, now these hydrogels. Uh, one of the most important thing is they swell. They take a lot of water, so it can be used uh, um, for skin grafting, uh, open wound, uh, um, okay, treatment. So swelling is a very very important uh, part of this hydrogel. So we can even uh, put in uh, drugs antibiotics or anti-inflammatory molecules 
so that uh, um, when it releases it um, uh, helps in the treatment of the burn wounds or scars and so on. Okay? So, that is degree of swelling the ratio of the sample volume in the swollen state to volume in the dry state. Okay? So, um, we can look at uh, volume or weight and then see how much change happens um, when, uh, as a function of time uh, and it is put into the okay, when it is put into water. So, it helps importance of degree of swelling solute diffusion coefficient, surface properties and surface mobility, optical properties, mechanical properties. Um, although these hydrogels cannot be used in mechanical um, environment force related environment because they have very poor uh, strength, um, still handling of the hydrogel uh, is very, very important. So, it should be able to um, su uh, sustain that sort of forces. Okay? Okay, the diffusion is also very important because when we are talking about uh, um, drug uptake and drug release, the diffusion of the drugs from the hydrogel plays a very important role. Okay? Okay. There are something called zero gel, zero gel and aerogel, okay? two types of uh, hydrogel, okay? that is the zero gel and um, aerogel. This is a solid, zero gel is a solid form of gel by drying it slowly at room temperatures with unhindered shrinkage. So, we slowly try to um, okay, uh, dry the gel without uh, any shrinkage, then that is called zero gel. It retains high porosity because you are not allowing it to shrink and it is also got very good uh, surface area like silica gel dried out and compact macro molecular structures like gelatin or rubber they all come under that. Whereas, aerogel this is derived from a gel in which the liquid component of the gel has been replaced with a gas that is why it is called aero no air. So, it can be any gas it can be air or it can be even some gas. Okay, that is called the aerogel. It is very low density solid because we have a lot of pores filled with the um, water. Okay, it can be used as a thermal insulator. They are also called frozen smoke, solid smoke or blue smoke due to its translucent, translucent nature and the way light scatters in the material. Okay? Like silica aerogel, they are very good at uh, thermal insulation. So, we have two types of gels zero gel, uh, we are allowing it to dry without uh, allow unhindered shrinkage. So, it has got very high porosity and enormous surface area, aerogel we have uh, air uh, or any gas molecules inside those uh, uh, voids. Okay? So, they have very low um, density and very light weight and they are very good uh, thermal insulators. Okay? Then, Stimuli response hydrogels because hydrogels, if they can respond based on pH or temperature or any other environment, um, it may be very useful if you want to deliver drugs. So, stimuli sensitive response to surrounding environment like pH, temperature, ionic strength, and electric potential. Okay? So, those such gels are very, very good to have. So, significant volume changes in response to small changes in the stimuli. So, uh, small change in pH and then uh, we expect uh, um, the volume change to be very large. Okay? Thermogels, they are temperature sensitive hydrogels. That means, when there is a change in temperature, these hydrogels start releasing say drug or moisture. So, physical sol gel transition as temperature changes, which is reversible upon cooling. So, this can be administered by injection using conventional syringe and subsequent in, in situ gelation occurs at physiological temperature. So, we can inject uh, a, a cold uh, um, gel and inside the body it can become hydrogel. So, it avoids invasive surgery for implantation. High water content improves compatibility with the injection within the injection site. So, we can target like poly N isopropyl acrylamide. Okay? This is a hydrogel which is temperature sensitive. So, this is a thermo sensitive gel. pH sensitive gels, pressure of ionizable pendant groups in the polymer backbone. So, we have a pendant group in the polymer. So, at certain pH um, they get uh, ionized. So, that is the pH sensitive hydrogels. Okay? 
At appropriate pH and ionic strength, these groups will ionize and they result in the buildup of a fixed charge along the polymer. Um, this electrostatic repulsive forces results in the pH dependent swelling and deswelling process as the water is either absorbed or expelled from the hydrogen network. So, we can have um, for example, at uh, tumor sites the pH is, um, is acidic. So, the hydrogel may be able to release at that particular condition um, drugs that has been encapsulated or water or any other chemical that has been encapsulated. Okay. Polyacrylic acid, polymethacrylic all these are pH sensitive. So, equilibrium swelling behavior of ionic hydrogels. So, we have these ionic hydrogels. Okay. Uh, what happens? If you take a cationic hydrogel, so as the pH is increased, so equilibrium swelling is very high at low pH because they are cationic at acidic pH and it comes down dramatically when the it goes to basic. Whereas, anionic hydrogels, um, they have very low equilibrium swelling whereas, um, as becomes basic they start swelling like you no, know, as shown here. Okay. These are the cationic hydrogels and these are the anionic hydrogels. Okay. So, ionic hydrogels um, this one swells at pH greater than pKa that is the side like polyacrylic acid, polymethacrylic acid. Intestinal drug delivery to protect drugs from gastric degradation and denaturation at low pH. Okay. So, uh, as you know stomach or gastric pH is very, very low. So, we can have uh, hydrogels okay, like this. So, it prevents uh, the denaturation. So, it releases the drugs in specific location like upper small intestine. For example, when it goes to the small intestine the pH starts going up. The stomach may be 2, um, in intestine upper region it may go to 4. So, it may release the drug or colon or GI tract and so on actually. So, we can control based on the pH where it needs to. The cationic hydrogel pH less than pKa here. Polymers from monomers of dimethyl, amino ethyl methacrylate, okay, DM, okay, DM, EAM, diethyl amino ethyl methacrylate and acrylamide. So, drug release in the stomach or intracellular environments. Okay. So, that means uh, here in the stomach you want it to be released, so, uh, and that is at very low pH. So, these cationic hydrogels are very, very good. Okay. Uh, anionic hydrogels are very good if you are talking about intestine region or colon region. Okay. So, depending upon uh, and the pH, the anionic hydrogels uh, will release uh, at higher pH and cationic hydrogels will release at uh, lower pH because of the equilibrium swelling. So, net biological hydrogels, these are networks of protein polysaccharide chains that contain 90 to 99 percent of water cells, tissues, organs or entire organisms. Okay. So, they can be called as biological hydrogels because they contain a lot of water. They are responsible for mechanical properties of cells and tissues. They regulate passive transport of particles and molecules. They serve as lubricants in joints or epithelial surfaces. Okay. So, yeah, what are the examples? Cytoskeleton, the cell shape, mechanical resistance to deformation. So, this prevents mechanical resistance deformation, it stabilizes tissues. Then if you look at the ECM extracellular matrix, mediates cell addition proliferation, regulates the distribution of proteins, growth factors, ions and drugs. Okay. These are all extracellular material. Mucus lining the stomach, bronchial tubes, intestine, they also take in water and can swell, serves as lubricant. First line of defense against pathogens, aids in adsorption of nutrients alteration in mucus permeability, viral and parasitic infection. So, these are all biological hydrogels, mucus, extracellular matrix, cytoskeleton and so on. Okay. Nuclear membrane, barrier that regulates exchange of macromolecules between nucleus and cytoplasmic compartments. They are also biological hydrogels. Basal lamina, this creates an envelope around blood vessels, controls the exchange of material between blood stream and tissue, governs angiogenesis blood clot even that is an hydrogel, glycoclex this is the lining epithelial cells of blood vessels highly hydrophobic, hydrophilic okay. that is the lining material inside the blood vessels, sinus secretion 
that is also called an hydrogel. So, a lot of biological in that means inside the body we have uh, plenty of hydrogels um, which can swell and, uh, and lose its moisture content and they all serve a lot of purpose and they all certain have certain important tasks to perform actually. So, what are the polymers that form hydrogel? Natural synthetic hyaluronic acid, sodium alginate, chitosan, okay, glucon, synthetic PVA, poly N vinyl pyridone, polyethylene glycol, polyhydroxyethyl methacrylate and derivatives. So, there are um, lot of these polymers and these polymer moderately or poorly swollen hydrogels. Okay. They are highly swollen hydrogels and this one is poorly swollen. So, lot of polymers. So, we always use these polymers to form uh, hydrogels. Okay. Carrageenan forms hydrogel, I missed out that. Um, glucon that is also a synthetic polymer that also can form uh, jelly uh, type of uh, behavior. So, lot of natural polymers are there, synthetic polymers are also there actually. So, sometimes we mix them together. Um, to get the correct properties. Okay. So, applications soft contact lenses polyhydroxy ethyl methyl acrylate. Okay. These are used in soft contact lenses earliest biomedical application it increases comfort originally they used to use hard contact lenses. So, the eyes get swollen after a couple of hours whereas the soft contact lenses one can wear it for a very long time. Reduction, reduced adaption time, easier fitting procedure, disadvantages, cost hypoxia due to oxygen impermeability, toxicity and lens, spoilage. Silicon hydrogel lenses more prevalent in market now, uh, higher oxygen permeability, comfortable fit, disadvantage more protein deposition to so the lens spoilage. Wound dressing, hydrogels are used widely in wound dressing, moist dressing components of paste for wound care, we can have a drug encapsulated wound dressing, dry wounds, burn wounds. Um, so, we can have moisture donor effect, helps autolytic debrittlement, increased collagenous production and moisture content of necrotic uh, wounds, can absorb and retain contaminated exudate within the gel mass through expansion of cross link polymer chains resulting in isolation of bacteria and odor molecules, high water content allows vapor and oxygen transmission cooling and hydrating effect. Okay. So, burn shield hydrogel, burn dressing, polyurethane foam containing 96 percent of water and 1.06 melulioca alternifolia extract. These are used for bone shield wound. Okay. Okay, so, lot of uh, companies make uh, these type of products. You can see granule gel, intracyte gel, pyrilon gel, aqua flow, wound tab using pectin, CMC, propylene glycol, CMC again propylene glycol, sodium CMC, polyethylene glycol, polypropylene glycol, sulfonated. So, they are all used quite a lot in wounds, okay, deep wounds, shallow wounds, thick wounds, um, first stage, second degree burn wounds, okay, and quite a lot of wounds. All these are products which are in market um, for all sorts of wounds actually. Of course, it can be used for drug delivery also. Okay, porous structure allows drugs to be loaded and then released. Uh, possibility for sustained release. Uh, we can have different types of mechanism of release: diffusion control, uh, swelling controlled, chemical controlled. Sorry, this is called swelling, swelling control, chemical control, environmental response, topical applications used to deliver drugs to elevate symptoms. Hydrogels made of PVA, polyvinyl pyridone containing extracts from medicinal plants for atopic dermatitis. So, lot of drug delivery examples are there. Transdermal delivery of drugs, polyurethane hydrogel as monolithic drug reservoirs. So, ocular drug delivery systems, lenses or punctual plugs, polyethylene glycol hydrogels with dexamethasone okay, uh, as an anti-inflammatory as well as sprain reliever these are almost reached phase 3 trials, okay. lot of advantages. Vaginal insert, cervidial for cervical ripening, okay. this has been in the market from 90s, late 90s, controlled release formulation used to induce uh, labor in patients who are at near the time of delivery. Okay. This is another example, 
hydrogel for subcutaneous insert in the form of reservoir system for the release of hysterylene acetate. Okay. This is a um, hormone agonist indicated for the treatment of children with central precocious puberty. Okay. It produces decrease in a particular hormone LH levels and sex steroids within the first month of treatment. Okay. So, this is again a hydrogel uh, used as a subcutaneous insert. So, there are already many products uh, in the market which uh, makes use of hydrogel uh, tissue engineering okay, as space filling agent, uh, scaffolds to prevent adhesion such as biological glue, glue as delivery vehicles for bioactive substances as three dimensional structure that organize cells and present stimuli. Okay. So, a lot of tissue engineering based hydrogels are there. Um, this is a product um, 3D matrix nano fibrous and nano porous hydrogel formed by self assembling per peptide arginine, alanine, aspartame. Okay. So, they help in the tissue growth, they are non immunogenic, biodegradable, and capable to interact with cells. They are also able to stimulate tissue and growth and vascularization, could be used for slow diffusion of drugs. Self assembly properties are also there, can be applied for own. Okay, so, tissue engineering advantages we have a lot of aqueous environment, so it can protect cells, fragile drugs, good transport or nutrition, maybe easily modified with cell addition, can be injected also. Uh, use, they are used usually biocompatible. Main disadvantages they are mechanically very weak hard to handle, dif difficult to sterilize. How do we sterilize these type of hydrogels? Maybe difficult to load drugs and cells then cross link in vitro as a prefabricated. So, all these are problems with hydrogel. So, most of the hydrogel applications or topical applications little bit subcutaneous application okay, and little bit of um, drug delivery systems, wound based systems and so on actually. So, um, hydrogels have a lot of future especially in this particular area of uh, uh, applications. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.